So you think it's possible that the universe is full of bacteria, and even those stars that last a thousand times longer than the sun, even even on the planets that orbit those stars, maybe it's bacteria for billions and billions and billions of years. We actually don't know what triggered the evolution to complexity on Earth. That's still a big question mark. Is that the most impressive invention on Earth to you? That Cambrian revolution is really what took us towards what we are. And in the meantime, there were the dinosaurs, etc. The dinosaurs were wiped out. So the evolution could have taken a completely different turn. Uh, it's always, I would say, mass extinction that are going to drive what's the end game. But... Um, yeah, you take two planets and you change, you know, those asteroid impacts or those big geological events that wipe out like 90% of life at any time. The thing that seemed to be um, interesting, there are two things. The first one is where you are located on our galaxy uh, matters a lot. We actually are in the habitable zone of our galaxy. And if you are too close to the center, then it's a lot denser. And rem remember, we have the Oort cloud around our solar system. And if you are in the region of the galaxy that's too populated, then you are going to run interaction, gravitational interaction with all these stars. And since it's more dense, you will have more of the comets that are leaving in the Oort cloud being ejected from the Oort cloud and coming towards the inner solar system and collide with planets. So you will have more of these impacts if you are too close to the center of the galaxy, not to mention the radiation. There is a place in our galaxy where it's a really bad neighborhood. You don't want to be there. You wouldn't be able to have life. But what really matters is extinctions, but also um, the climate history of a planet has a role to play. And it seems that it's a theory. It still has to be backed up by more observation, but there is a good correlation between not only the passage of the solar system towards the center of the galaxy, there is one place where we get hit by asteroid because of the interaction I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. But the other one is the climate with the Milankovitch cycles, big jumps in life's evolution seem to be associated with snowball earth episodes. We don't know why yet. Snowball episode, intuitively you would think that they are connected to a decrease in life because the whole earth is covered in ice. But for some reason, there were big jumps in evolution right after each of those episodes. And, and today, there are other things like why all of a sudden you have mutation that seems to be responsible for, you know, a big jump in evolution. We are not clear yet. So all of those things, when you're thinking about life elsewhere, are going to come into play. And I cannot tell you that a planet that remains habitable for much longer than the Earth will have an evolutionary path that's the same or different. Depends on extinction, depends on climate, depends on whatnot. It's a little bit surreal that we're two descendants of apes. <laughs> well, I, I think that some some people try to figure out what what the heck is going on. And I mean, we're very biased, even as, as so. You, uh, we're biased as humans. You're less biased as a scientist, uh, but we still love Earth. We still don't know anything but this Earth. And so even though you try to get escape from thinking of what life is, in the search for the nature of life, we still kind of connect it to the way we understand the nature of life here on Earth. So I think that it's a little different than that. We are biased when it comes to the origin of life. Yes. Because, well, we are the only model we know. And as I said, it makes sense because it seems that a lot of, you know, uh, stars like the sun mm -hmm. appeared 10 billion years ago. And there are lots of worlds that really resemble the Earth. 
and lots of water out there and lots of conditions that could be a repeat of what we know. And we know that this biochemistry works. Mm -hmm. So as a, a, again, as I mentioned, what is going to change is really the evolution of a planet, extinction, geology, etc. But our model is probably very abundant. I'm not saying that the end game is going to resemble us because of all these extinction, etc. But this is a good bias. It's one that has the number for it. Uh, you know, the principle of mediocrity. Uh, I, I think that uh, in that case, it really applies where the earth is representative of an abundance of other words. Now, of course, there can be other biochemistry. We have some examples in our own solar system. Titan might be a representative of that. We are not very clear of the kind of biochemistry that can come out of a world where you have hydrocarbon lakes and uh, rains and, and things like that, but we are going there. So we will learn something about this. Um, so the bias re is right there. The nature of life is different. If really life is the best way the universe has to fight entropy, there is no bias there because physics is the same all across the universe, at least the universe we know. There might be other universes, but the one we know works with the same physics. So if life is the, th the best way to fight entropy, you can imagine that life permeates the entire universe. And then the question might change to, like flavors of ice cream, what are the flavors of complexity that this process, this nature of life leads to? And there we might have bias about what complexity looks like, what beautiful complexity looks like. We look at humans that operate a certain physical scale and uh, time scale, and we think this is intelligence. We have another problem. We don't know what life is. We don't know what intelligence is, and we don't know what consciousness is, yeah. but we are trying to tackle the big question. Uh, but do we know what complexity is also? You know, no, I, I think that we have to be honest. And as a scientist, yeah. and I'm gonna step back and talk about intelligence. Uh, for me, a bacteria that has survived, like cyanobacteria, that has survived just like us, four billion years in one incarnation or another, and actually they are very similar to the one that they were 3.5 billion years ago, it has some intelligence about its environment. So for complexity, it might be that we need to take the world literally, which is an assemblage or additional capacity to gather, collect, store information. Maybe this is something like that, or actually use that information to do something with it. Um, but I do completely agree with you when you talk about flavor of ice cream. I think this is exactly it. And I have a basic education about what physics is doing right now. And I look at quantum physics and what it says about the universe and about the connection, about an atom here and an atom here a photon here and a photon there. And I am starting to put maybe wrongfully two and two together, but in my mind, and of course it's nothing until I can prove it, but in my mind, the universe is co connected everywhere in all different places. So this life connection is something that, as you said, permeate the universe. And the way to find life might be very different than to look for the origins of life. I think it's a good thing to go out there and look for the origin of life somewhere else because it's the manifestation of the nature of life that all of a sudden becomes apparent, evident to our eye. But what I think would be our greatest achievement is that if we can find that process of life because at that point, in my mind, the universe all of a sudden is going to illuminate itself with actually its living force, what I can only call a living force. To me, this is what we are looking at, a universe that becomes more and more complex with time, more and more able to gather information, and interestingly enough, why to understand itself. So Sagan was right when he was telling, we are the universe trying to understand itself. 
And the more we go, the more the universe becomes alive, maybe intelligent, and maybe also conscious.